On Efficacy, A Teenager's Guide to Changing the World, Christopher Chen from Troy High School. So before I talk about youth efficacy, I first want to address what I consider the tragedy of the classroom education. When I first entered high school as a freshman, school seemed like an endless series of tests and lectures with no real connection to the world. To myself and many of my peers, this was our greatest obstacle. There was a large focus on uniform thinking and uniform test taking, and it was all so mind-numbingly boring. Many of you may feel the same way about your own schooling. After all, in school, we're called on to be perfect students instead of fervent activists. But let's not forget that as teenagers, we hold incredible potential. By framing learning in terms of our interests and convincing ourselves that the materials that we learn are truly fascinating, our personal growth becomes much easier. We hold a vast expanse of information from so many different areas, from movies and books, all the way to social media, TV, and even comic books. It's just hard sometimes to realize how our interests naturally connect to the real world. Connecting our passions starts by learning as much as we can, and readily applying that knowledge by taking initiative. For me, my interests were in the environment, stewardship, and a fascination to study the chemistry behind it. In dense fog, I saw the Tyndall effect. I saw light particles shining and refracting off of water vapor particles suspended in the air. In the caraway seeds of my mother's freshly baked rye bread, I realized the olfactory Nash humors, working together to create the rich aromas that I smelled. In the forest behind my house, I delved into leaf pigmentation and natural selection. It is this simple idea that drives youth efficacy, the belief that we as youth can impact issues that we care deeply about. So, as young adults, we have a responsibility for the world that we will inherit, and we have to apply our learning to understand the problems that we face now and later. The end goal is to shake the status quo to address these problems. As renegades, as thinkers, as dreamers and as builders, working together to fulfill a common vision. Today, I'd like to share some experiences where I've led and worked with fellow youth who have consistently surprised and inspired me. They've convinced me that even as youth, we can impact our community, our city, our state, our nation, and eventually our world. One of, my early experience, one of my earliest memories in high school is being part of Troy High's Environmental Activist Club. This year, as president, I lead the club in recycling paper, as well as recycling plastic and glass bottles every week. Now, at its surface, the environmental activists may not have an obvious effect on the community day to day. After all, we're just a group of about 30 students collecting and recycling from only 120 classrooms um, in a grassroots-style effort. But as a team of dedicated youth, we make an invaluable impact on our community in the long term. We recycle every week, regardless of the Michigan winter weather, for a school of over 2,000 students. In fact, last year, our collector, Rizzo, um, informed us that we had recycled over 15 tons of materials as a club over the past year. Through gradual fundraising, um, through recycling bottles and hosting events, we've been able to adopt animals from the Detroit Zoo, like tigers and sloths, and we've been able to earn Michigan Green School status for Shore High. Leading the environmental activists has taught me that um, even as youth, we can make an impact on our community in a small way over weeks, months, and even years. And this can result in incredible long-term change. Another formative experience that I had was as part of the Michigan Youth Conservation Council. Two autumns ago was my second year on the council, 
and my first year as a youth advisor. Led and run by 25 Michigan teenagers, the council addresses one environmental issue annually. We then speak and testify before a state senate committee. That year, our discussion to choose the topic was rough at first. Many of our members had left the council to go to college, and the 2014 midterm senate elections hindered our efforts. But during the debate, I was struck by how heated and passionate youth could get. Many, many of us offered deeply personal anecdotes about how oil spills or air quality issues had affected our lives. Eventually, we chose electronic waste as our issue. Reforms that we passed potentially impacted millions of people statewide. In April, we spoke and testified before the State Senate Committee, and we submitted our 20-page research report. Later, Senator Rebecca Warren introduced Senate Bill 0301, which seeks to expand Michigan's 25 million pound electronic waste take back program. No matter our age or our background, I learned that a group of dedicated youth could impact the state by influencing legislation. The last anecdote I want to discuss today is conducting nanomaterials research at the University of Michigan. Last summer, I had the honor of living and studying in Ann Arbor at the University of Michigan's Center for Photonics and Multiscale Nanomaterials. Our program was small and included only seven high school students living and studying in various electrical engineering, physics, and chemistry research labs across campus. Even within the field of nanomaterials, our research was diverse. Some of us studied the photoluminescent quantum dots, while others would study entangled photons. My own research was on electrochromism, a chemical property of certain compounds often applied to photovoltaics. The first few weeks were difficult for all of us high schoolers. After all, we were jumping into an academic field usually traversed by professors and graduate students. Not only that, but literature study, lab training, and theory sometimes took up to 10 hours per day. But in the end, we supported each other as youth and as friends. Through late night study sessions, we realized vital connections between our research. And this later led to greater understanding and dedication to our studies. We helped each other realize that as youth, our research vision was no different than any professor's, to conduct meaningful research that might be applied all around the world. As researchers, we had to understand the issues that impacted us analytically and scientifically and grow in our passions and our commitments with a chance to make a difference. So, what's the takeaway from all these stories? Looking back, it wasn't the amount recycled, bills introduced, or research experience gained that taught me the most. Although those were incredibly valuable lessons, my greatest reward was the efficacy that I gained. I now trusted that youth could accomplish as much as any adult. Not only that, but as the next generation, um, we, had, we have a responsibility to combine our passions with our learning in order to make an impact on the world around us. My freshman self would have found efficacy impossible. He would have seen learning as dull and agonizing, completely separate from the subject, subjects that he loved. But now I realize how much we can do as youth and how much more we have left to do. At this point in my talk, I want to challenge you, the audience, to close your eyes and imagine a topic that completes you, something that you would learn about for yourself and not for anybody else. If you had to talk about one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? This is the topic that you should apply, learning in school and out. Concepts that I learned in Mr. Hevel's chemistry class helped me in my Ann Arbor research. Facts that I randomly picked up from the Discovery Channel helped me answer a senator's questions in Lansing. These experiences are universal, no matter how old you are or where you come from. So take initiative and use the resources around you. If you're a theater geek, start a play company. If you're a math prodigy, organize tutoring in the inner city. If you're a history fan, interview veterans and share your experiences. 
because youth efficacy is really about trailblazing. It's about standing up for what you believe and taking on a cause with purpose. It's about learning about your own passions and about the world around you. So what's the key to changing the world as a teenager? It's to start by finding yourself. Thank you. I'd like to acknowledge the Thinking Project and Clarkston High School for generously hosting this event. Mr. Monty Clary, um, my counselor for nominating me, uh, Mr. Rob Zinda and the entire Shur High Environmental Activists and Yearbook, um, Mr. Darren Bagley, the Michigan Youth Conservation Council, Ms. Akisha Moore, Professor Jay Gua, Ms. Bushabari, as well as you, the listener. Thank you. <laughs>